Hello, this is Craig, and welcome to another episode of Cruising Off Duty. In this episode, I'm going to make a point about how even when you're planning to go sailing with someone else, plans can change, and you may end up sailing alone after all. When you own a cruising sailboat, you're often sailing alone. Either your partner goes downstairs for a nap, or plans change and you end up being by yourself. It's all good as long as you've practiced the solo sailing skills. And in this episode, I'm going to start going over the pros and cons of the different anchorages on the Ottawa River, starting with the closest one to the Nepean Sailing Club, Crystal Bay. Now, I'm not sure what the water is like where you are, but on the Ottawa River, it's like sailing on steeped tea. And sometimes when you bring up your anchor, you bring up more than you counted on. Yick, what is this thing? And why won't it let go of my anchor? All this on this episode of Cruising Off Duty. This is going to be a very slow sail. I'm just kill the engine. As you can see, my sails are not even slightly filling with air. It's coming theoretically. What little wind we have. It's coming from a beam a little bit after the beam, but we're not getting any wind in the sail. So the decision is: do I stay patient? Do I give up and turn the motor back on? Anyways, so today is Friday, the who knows what of August, and uh, I'm off my usual, when I'm off on weekends, I'm usually off Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so I tend to have three day weekends when I have weekends off. And of course, Janice doesn't have Fridays off because she works Monday to Friday, so I am alone, solo. And today, the original plan was for her to meet me at the club after work, and I would get the boat all set up, and then uh, she would meet me here, we'd take off for pennies, go up the river for the weekend, but things have changed. Uh, her brother came into town with his four kids, two of which are toddlers, and him and his wife are, I think, a little stressed out from all the child care needs, so Janice nicely volunteered to be a babysitter for the night so they could go out and have some alone time without the kids tonight. So that meant, even though I was off, I wasn't gonna just be waiting until she gets off work, I was gonna be waiting till tomorrow morning to go out sailing. And then the weather forecast changed and now Sunday is supposed to be absolutely crappy. 30 knots of wind, blowing rain all day, so now our weekend is turning into more of just a Friday, Saturday. It's a power motor. So anyways, uh, so that's when I decided, well, since I got the day off and nobody's around, I'm going to go sailing up to Pinney's and then Janice is going to get her son or daughter to drive up there drop her off like I did last time at the dock and I'll pick her up in the dinghy which as you can see from its general laziness in the water we are not moving at all really so I'll pick her up tomorrow morning but then we really only have the day and we're gonna come back Saturday night unfortunately tomorrow is just looking way too crappy it's one thing to have rain it's another thing to have rain with 30 knots of wind at the same time so that doesn't sound pleasant especially since I'll be the one motoring back in the pouring rain. She'll be down below being all nice and cozy. So uh, Saturday it is. Saturday is the end of our weekend. And then I guess I'll spend Sunday editing videos for you guys. At least today's beautiful and sunny and really not even a cloud in the sky. Let me just do a quick pan. There's hardly anybody out sailing right now because it's A, it's Friday in the middle of the day and people have jobs. And B, as you can see from the sail, there's like no, no wind. This is what I get to do on my day off. Float around on a boat on a beautiful day. Wind or no wind, that's pretty damn awesome. Originally I only had the one sail up. Now since it's such a late wind day, I have both sails up. I'm in no rush to get to Pennies. It's kind of nice, the uh, journey's a little more fun than being uh, anchored, especially if it's this hot and there's a lack of wind. At least out here you're getting a bit of breeze. But um, Today's episode is going to be mostly about that place that's directly over there. I'll just flip her around. The bay right in front of that Crystal Palace that was once Nortel and is now the Department of Defense is uh, Crystal Bay. And Crystal Bay, or Crystal Beach some people call it, is uh, an anchorage just, just outside of the Nepean Sailing Club. And I'm going to do a series of benefits and pros and cons of each of the anchorages on the Otto River. And I'm going to go from the closest to the Nepean Sailing Club 
to the furthest. And of course the closest is by far Crystal Bay. All right, let's look at where Crystal Bay is in relation to kind of our whole river. Now this is where the club is, and this is where our favorite anchorage is, Constance Bay. But why would we ever pick Crystal Bay as an option here? Let me just zoom in a bit. It is ridiculously close to the club. I mean ridiculously close. So why would you need to anchor so close to where your club is? Well, as you can see right here, there's a big rock wall that blocks the wind. So when you're in your slip down here, that's where my slip is about, it is stinking hot. Even if there's a light breeze inside there, you feel nothing. The big rock wall blocks the wind and it's like a sauna in your slip. So a lot of times if we just want to get out of the stagnant air of the club, we just motor out here. It's not even worth putting your sails up so short and cut left and anchor right there in Crystal Bay. It's awesome if you just want to get out, fire up the barbecue, have a little bit of food and stay out of the stifling heat of the harbor. The other time you would use it is on the way back from one of these other anchorages further up river. There's Elmer Island, which will be the one, the anchorage I talk about next episode. There's Penny's Point right there and on and on and on. But uh, when you're coming back, sometimes with the wind, it's hard to estimate how long it's gonna to take to get back to the club. So if it takes you a lot less time than you think, and you're not really ready to end your weekend, you just stop here. You pull into Crystal Bay, drop anchor, spend the last two or three hours of your weekend having a, having a drink at anchor or having a barbecue again. And then once the sun is setting, you're only like a 10 minute motor around the bend to the club. So let's take a look at Crystal Bay, of course, from a drone. Now, one thing I want you to look at here is as we take off, look how sparkly and shiny and brown our water is. That's right, it's brown. It's like steeped tea, but it's not steeped in tea, it's actually steeped in wood. Over a hundred years ago, the economic basis of the Ottawa area was logging. And how did they move the logs from where they cut them down to where they processed them? They just threw them in the river. That's right. Threw them in the river so thick they could walk on them. And they just pushed them and shoved them until they made it to the processing plant. But when you have hundreds of thousands of logs in the river, not all of them make it to this plant down by Parliament Hill. Many of them just get waterlogged and sink, or at least partially sink. And then they float up and down, and eventually you run into them with your boat. Yay! Now I use my boat all the time. And in the six years I've been on the Ottawa River, I probably hit about six deadheads at least. But what are the chances you have your camera running when you actually hit one? Wait a second, remember the episode on Canada Day? Now there are thousands of logs on the bottom of the Ottawa River and you're gonna hear one of them hit my boat right now. Oh, you hit something. You just hit something. Did you hear that? Yeah. Yeah. Deadhead. So there you go. That's what it looks and sounds like when you hit a deadhead. It kind of spooks you at first, but over the years I've noticed it doesn't actually do any damage. At least not to sailboats. We have lead or iron keels that just knock those bad boys right out of the way. Now, if you're one of those power boaters with the big cigarette boat doing about 60 miles an hour and you hit one of those things, uh, that may be a different story. So why all this explanation about the logging industry in Ottawa? Well, part of it is to explain the brownish hue. I'm sure a few viewers have been wondering why it looks like that. It's not pollution. And the second reason is to explain that even when we're in 10 feet of water, we can't see the bottom. Therefore, when you're having a little trouble bringing up your anchor, you're not sure what you're attached to. More on that in a second. But first of all, while I'm flying around here, let's talk about the pros of Crystal Bay. The first and most important pro is it's a great bottom for anchoring. It's a sandy clay bottom throughout the whole area. Everything's about nine or 10 feet deep and doesn't matter what the wind's doing, you're not gonna drag. Give that five out of five stars. The next pro is it's close to amenities. In this case, the amenity is the club. So if you're rafted up with friends and you run out of ice, you can just motor around the corner, grab some more and come right back. I'm not sure everybody would agree the club is considered an amenity, so I'm only gonna give that three out of five stars. The third pro is that it's a huge anchorage and there's no reason you need to anchor anywhere near anyone else unless you want to. There's no weeds near the surface, so the swimming is good. All right, this drone footage was taken beside the Crystal Palace, which is our landmark for Crystal Bay, and you can see Crystal Bay off there in the distance. Okay, what are the cons of Crystal Bay? Well, I can really only think of one, but it's a biggie. 
and that is that there's pretty much no protection from the wind from almost any direction. So it's a great anchorage to hang out with friends if it's a calm day. But if it's really windy, you're going to be bucking and slapping those waves nonstop. You certainly don't want to sleep on your boat if that's the case. Well, that covers the pros and cons of Crystal Bay. And remember how I said there's good holding? Well, sometimes it's more than just the sandy bottom that's keeping you in place. Earlier this season, this is what happened when we tried to pull up our anchor. It's like a tie rod. It's like a piece of metal. It's rusty. Oh, well, it could be a railway track. Oh. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to get that off my anchor. What the hell is it? It does look like a railway track. An old rusty tire rail rail. Huh. <laughs> uh, kind of gross. Makes me know we're going to have a dead body pulled up. I'm hoping it'll just fall off when I get it out of the water. Who knows? We'll see. So not still connected to something at the bottom. What the hell is it? I think it's wood, isn't it? I don't know. It's all such a perfectly uniform width. No, I know it's not a tree, but I'm thinking it could have been a big board. Oh, it's almost off. Oh, okay. Anchor move. It doesn't poke a hole in our boat on its way down. Oh. Hmm. He has a nice butt. Ah. I don't want to touch it. <laughs> Poke it. It's gross. What's it made of? Tap it. Can't reach it. Get a tool. Too bad we don't have a crowbar. You know what? I'll get the. Um, I'll get the hook. Oh yeah, the bow hook. Ugh, gross. It's a creature. Kind of snail on it. Tap it. I wonder if it's metal or wood. Well, this is uh, not a tourism advertisement for. Our Come and sail the Ottawa River because this is just plain gross. Oh, it's wood, I guess. It's some sort of big wooden. Yes. Gross. Get off my anchor. There you go. It sunk yes. fast. Whoever it was. Who knows how much wood is at the bottom of this river? That's why it's got this nice murky brown color. Thousands and thousands of logs on the bottom of this river. Well, that's the end of this episode. Join us next time when we'll take on the next anchorage up the river, Elmer Island. So as I end this episode, I'm back to present day, sailing upriver on a really light wind day. As you can see, I've gone wing on wing just to try and catch any wind I can. If you've enjoyed this episode, please click like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. If this is your first time watching a cruising off-duty episode, why not start at the beginning with episode one, how to buy a cruising sailboat, or episode two, how to ship your sailboat. My last episode, episode seven, Baskin's Beach, Party and Tragedy, is probably the best episode I've done so far. Click any of these to experience more. Thanks a lot.